Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to week two of 30 days of NIME. For week one, we focused on how to get data into NIME and how to get data out, which to be, to be fair, only showed one method to get data out, but there are several methods. For week two, we're going to be looking at cleaning data, transforming data, selecting data, because this is something, as we all know, we spend a lot of time doing in the data sciences. So for this part, I went out to find some relatively messy data. And I found this data over on Kaggle. I'm going to post a link for you to get this data. Mind you, this does not have a description. If you want to find out some more information about this file, then go to the code section. The poster of this file, he has some notes in there so you can learn more about the file. So now over to nine, we need to get that data in. Uh, the, the node I'm actually going to be showing you today is the Data Explorer node. This is the node that lets you get a preview of your data so that you can spot whatever is going on. And you can see the shape of your data. You can see how many values you have, all that good information you want to have before you really dive into your data prep and analysis. So before I even get there, let's bring in our data file. I'm using the file reader node because it's a text file. I'm not going to use the Excel reader or CSV because it's not comma separated. But the file reader is ridiculously powerful. Let's look at this file again. It looks a little bit scary, but it might not look too simple to work with. But trust me, nine makes person this and bringing this in ridiculously easy. So let's go do that. So I have the file over in my workflow area. So I'm just going to go there and I'm going to grab it and open. See this beautiful button that says auto detect format. We're going to click on that and voila, done. <laughs> it's, it's parsed out the data into columns and it's good to bring over, but let's go and transform some variables because for instance, the transaction ID, flight date, these are not numbers. This is a date, but it doesn't look like a date. So I'm just going to bring it in a string and this should be string. So I'm just going to make them strings. The flight number, I'm going to make it a string because the flight number, I would like to concatenate that with the airline code eventually. So I'm going to make that a string. And uh, these are all strings. These are all going to be numbers. And I'm satisfied with that. And I'm going to go ahead and load. So now this is a pretty large file, as you can see in a second, but Nime reads it in, even after doing all those transformations, it reads it in pretty quickly. It has 1.1 million rows. So we have a lot here and it's pretty nice and rich. Okay, good. I'm just double checking my variables were brought in the way I wanted them to be brought in. So yes, we've read the file in. Now let's go explore the variables. Data Explorer, super nice node. Just going to connect this to this. There's some configuration options in here. Honestly, I don't really usually bother with them because it usually just works right off the bat. So the data explorer node is done running and it took about 15 seconds to run through this one point something billion million rows of data. Now let's go into the interactive view to see things about our variables. The first pane shows us our numeric variables. It shows the minimum, the maximum, the mean, standard deviation, variance, skewness, and kurtosis, and overall sum, if it makes sense to consider this. And over here, you can decide to exclude columns if there's anything you don't want to push forward to the rest of your transformations and analysis. For the nominal one, it shows us the number of missing values in this first column. Here, it shows us how many unique values we have. Of course, this one, we need to transform this because it should not be nominal. It should actually be a date for the airline code, which is the same as the um, airline name. It makes sense for us to have the same number of values here. We have 26. We don't have anything missing. We have about uh, like five airlines which pop up a lot. And we have a couple which are moderate, about five again. And then we have some which don't show up a lot. For the tail number, we do have an issue with missing with missing values. We're probably going to have about 11, 11 or so percent missing. For the originating airport code and name, that's the same thing. We have 363 values of those and we don't have anything missing. We have a couple of airports which, you know, show up a lot and we have some that are less, less uh, frequent. Similar thing for the originating city, state. 
we have some missing values for the state and you get the idea so this you know could show you where you could expect to have to deal with missing values it shows you how many different values you have frequencies information so this is a nice way to get some shape information about your data and to also see some measures of central tendencies and deviations in your data set so that's a data explorer i'm going to be using this data set for a lot of this section probably for this entire section because um, like i mentioned it is a bit messy so it gives us opportunities to use those transformation nodes to do some data cleaning calculations and transformations which this week focuses on thank you so much for watching guys that's day eight and i shall see you in day nine goodbye